Cardinal Lawrence. It seems the responsibility for the Conclave falls upon you. Welcome to this week's cinema show, where we're marking the 20th anniversary of the Zurich Film Festival. There's been some major talent in that town, bringing in films that are heavily tipped for the awards season. Well, film critic Emma Jones joins me in the studio. You've Hello. come back from the festival. Hi, Emma. Yeah. Well, let's start with the film Lee, which was showing at Zurich and coincidentally comes out mm. this week in France. Yes. The star of the movie, Kate Winslet, was in Zurich to accept a Golden Icon Award. That's their sort of acting career achievement prize, right? Yes, that's right. And it's a starry list of actors who have received that prize, uh, previously including Jessica Chastain, Glenn Close, Richard Gere. And this year, it was Kate Winslet's turn. Oh, that's her moment. Well, this <laughs> film is based on the life of Lee Miller, an American female photographer who worked for Vogue magazine mm. on the front lines of the Second World War, and she died in uh, 1977. Lee Miller is a fascinating figure, isn't she? She really is. And this is the story, I think, in, in the film, told of a woman who possibly didn't quite get her due during her lifetime. It's that kind of, of biopic. And historically, Lee Miller has been known as more of a model and also the muse of a 20th century visual artist, Man Ray. But in fact, she took some really extraordinary images during the Second World War, where she was one of the few women in that field who made it to the front lines. She also took some um, some images from the liberation of the concentration camps, which are very, very moving, and also famously had her picture taken in Hitler's old bathtub. Uh, so Kate Winslet plays Lee Miller as feisty, opinionated and fearless. And I think this film must have meant a good deal to her because she co-produced it. It's uh, based on a biography written by Lee Miller's son, Anthony. It's directed by Ellen Kuras, who I think is probably an old friend of Kate's because she was a cinematographer on another Kate classic, 2004's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, if you remember that. I do indeed. Goes back. Yeah, and indeed, uh, Kate Winslet did insist on having a female director on board. OK, so two women behind uh, the camera in mm -hmm. two different ways there. Very interesting. Well, let's hear more from Kate Winslet on revisiting Lee Miller's legacy and we'll get a look at the film. We want to redefine how people think of someone who has been so often described as the ex-lover and former muse of Man Ray. We put her love life to one side and we celebrate who she was as a middle-aged woman who went to the front line and photographed what was happening to the victims of the atrocities of the Nazi regime to mean resilience and compassion and togetherness and power has been the single most inspiring lesson that I have ever learned from any role I've ever played. No. Even when I wanted to look away, I knew I couldn't. There are different kinds of wounds just the ones you can see. So much to appreciate about this film, including a really all-star supporting cast, including Alexander Skarsgård, Andrew Roseborough, Josh O'Connor, and Marion Cotillard mm. and Nomi Merlon also have significant cameos in the film because a lot of it is set in France in 1944. Now, I feel it's a really classy film, the scenes of war and liberation, and indeed the discovery of the concentration camps. They're all handled really well, and yet I just feel that something is maybe missing from Lee that will fail to elevate it to the top rung of awards contenders. However, Kate Winslet is magnificent. If you're a fan of hers, see it. OK, well, I will then. Well, going to one of Kate Winslet's former co-stars now, <laughs> because she appeared alongside Jude Law in that festive classic, The Holiday, of course. Now, Jude Law was also at the Zurich Film Festival this year. His film, The Order, actually open proceedings. Yes, indeed. The Order, slightly different to The Holiday, <laughs> is, is the new film from Australian director Justin Curzel. And it's, it's a really sombre but very exciting thriller that's based upon the true story of a violent far-right American terrorist from the 1980s, Bob Matthews. He's played here with great charisma by actor Nicholas Holt. Now, Jude Law plays the world-weary, mustachioed FBI agent Terry Husk, who goes after him. I've got to say, this is another cracking...
speaking role for Jude Law, who recently played a terrifying Henry VIII in a film I really loved called Firebrand. Now, Jude Law got the Golden Eye Prize for the Order in Zurich. He was there to collect it, and he says he's having something of a renaissance in his acting career. OK, well, let's hear more from Jude Law on this special moment in his trajectory. Having a lot of fun. Um... It, it feels like a, a moment of alignment. I don't know why. I don't, it may, it's since I turned 50, perhaps. Um, it, it just feels that there are roles where I can uh, uh, lose myself a little more. Perhaps people are seeing me in a different way. I'm not really sure. But those two roles in particular uh, were hugely satisfying. And they felt very different from anything I'd done before and, and gave me opportunity that I'd never had before. So I suspect we'll be seeing more of him uh, soon, sooner rather than later. Well, on to another film that's creating a lot of buffs for its lead actor, mm. who is Pamela Anderson, no less. She's in mm. Gia Coppola's new film, The Last Showgirl. Tell us more about this one. Yeah, the film's about a dancer, Shelley, who's in her 50s. She's been on the same show on the Las Vegas Strip for about 30 years. And then she learns that the show is closing. Now, Pamela Anderson was in Zurich. She also got a Golden Eye Award, in fact. And she's quite a revelation in this movie. And speaking of renaissances, she's really having something of one herself. You may remember that Netflix documentary yep. recently, which really dissipated that image, if it had lingered at all, of, you know, the days of Tommy Lee and Baywatch. Now, she and the director of The Last Showgirl, Gia Coppola, were in Zurich and Pamela was speaking about why she wanted the role. Well, obviously there's some parallels there and um, just receiving such a wonderful script with such a great character, kind of very, you know, a lot of colour, a lot of flaws and, and joy and sadness. I mean, it was an incredible character to play that she was just still full of dreams. And, you know, I never really thought I'd get this opportunity to work as an actress even. So but it was just great timing. And um, I'm um, really proud of the film. Mm. <laughs> For you, in terms of directing this story, Hollywood seems pretty brutal, but I think that the Las Vegas Strip, that world seems pretty cutthroat as well. Was that an interesting proposition for you as a director? Yeah. I haven't really thought about the parallels to Hollywood so much as it, to Vegas until sort of recently, so I don't think I went into it with that kind of mindset, but it's true. I mean, it's so much with, out with the old and with the new, and it's very cutthroat and corporate and consumerism-based. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of always say, like, all that glitters is not gold. It has this sort of dreamy facade, but what, what goes on behind the scenes is um, just normal human work. You know, you, you have a great performance in this film. I was wondering, do you feel in some ways that you've been underestimated, saying that you never thought that you might get the chance to play this kind of part at all? I don't know if it's underestimated or misunderstood or it was my own darn fault. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, what choices I've made. I've definitely taken an unconventional path to um, you know, being an actress at this point. And like I said, I never knew that it would actually ever materialize. So. I always thought, well, you know, I've had a really exciting life. I don't regret most of it. <laughs> but a lot of, I couldn't have done, played this part without that experience. So it's funny how that all works out in the end. But this whole new vista is opening up before you now, really, if you think about the Broadway show and then the Netflix documentary and now this. You know, it's like life opens up again in, in, in terms when of that. When you least expect it, usually. When you stop trying to control it all and just kind of open your mind and your heart to what is, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and to take the opportunity when it comes. I mean, Barry Weisler called me and said this was after that, you know, Pam and Tommy Hulu project came out that I've never seen. Um, he said, I don't want people to remember you like this or think of you like this. You have so much to give. I want you to play Roxy in Chicago. And I was like, when? And he said, mm -hmm. now. And I just said, OK, pack mm -hmm. the bags. We're going now. Mm -hmm. And then you know, my son made the documentary. He was already in the process of making that when that happened. And then Gia saw the documentary and then called me. So you know, it just kind of lined up. And in the moment, I wasn't quite sure where I was headed. I was just doing it, you know, and um, Broadway was really where I think it really kind of opened me up and I thought, oh, 
I don't know if I can sing or dance or act on stage, but for some reason I could do all of it at the same time. Yeah. And so that was interesting and I just was annihilated after that. And then, you know, you called and I said, okay, we'll just keep going. Yeah, you're fearless. I'm fearless. You just try, which um, is such a good quality. No, I think fear can, you know, definitely paralyze us, but feel the fear and do it anyway. Okay, so it could be the start of an interesting new chapter in mm. Pamela Anderson's uh, career. It will be. Now we're wrapping up the show with Conclave. This is a film yes. that was originally shown, had its premiere at the Telluride uh, Film Festival. It was at Zurich as well. A personal favourite of yours, Emma, I believe? Absolutely. I am tipping this film for so many nominations in all the awards categories this coming season. So Conclave's lead actor, Ray Fiennes, and German director, Edward Berger, his last film was All Quiet on the Western Front, a real classic, were in Zurich to show the film. Now Conclave is the fictional story of the choosing of a new pope. Mm -hmm. um, if this sounds slightly familiar um, from, you know, blockbusters we may have seen or novels we may have read, I'd like you to think of a really classy, arthouse feel adaptation of the story maybe Dan Brown should have written <laughs> about the, the choosing of, of a new pope. That is, uh, that is Conclave. Okay. And uh, in this film, Ray Fiennes is ably supported by Stanley Tucci, uh, Isabella Ross Rossellini and John Lithgow. OK, well, with a stellar cast like yeah. that, it does seem like a recipe for success. Superb. We'll wrap up with a look at Conclave then. Well, thanks so much for joining us uh, this week, Emma. Do remember to check in with us next time here on Arts24 for more movie news and on our social media channels. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. There is one sin which I have come to fear above all others. Certainty. If there was only certainty, and no doubt, there would be no mystery. And therefore no need for faith. <laughs>